Hey, what's going on everyone? Sam here from Lake Pro Tackle. If you're struggling to catch fish after a cold front in the springtime, don't worry, you're not alone. A lot of people find it a struggle to catch fish after a cold front any time of the year, but in the springtime, you know, it seems like we get a lot of rain, a lot of different weather, warm fronts, cold fronts, and what happens is those fish can get confused sometimes. What happens, I, what I believe happens is that um, they get set on one thing and then when the weather changes on them, like on a dime real quick, uh, they get conditioned and you know, they don't really want to eat. And that happens, it seems like it happens quite a bit in the springtime to me, uh, especially here in Texas where the weather is pretty drastic uh, during the springtime. And I say springtime, it really starts around late February to May, um, where one week will be super hot, one week will be super cold but I'm gonna go down uh, my list of my top four lures to get bit during these uh, cold front times. And you know, the cold fronts don't have to be, it doesn't have to get super cold, but it's gonna be a big drop in temperature as well as high skies, bluebird skies, sunny days. And these, you know, if you're an angler and you've had a lot of experience on the water, maybe you found these conditions to be tough for you as well. So we're gonna break down my favorite lures uh, to get bit during these cold front or post front times. Uh, first off, we're going to start with some moving baits here. You know, uh, the fish typically won't move from their areas unless it's a prolonged uh, exposure to these different conditions. So typically when a cold front comes through or I'm fishing post front conditions, those fish are still there. They're just going to be nestled down in the rocks. They're going to be uh, not wanting to eat. I would say it's a negative feeding mood for them. Um, but my number one bait, my first bait here, not my number one bait, but my first bait that I'm going to be trying is going to be a Strike King 1.0 square bill. Now this bait right here, you know, springtime, the fish want to move up. They want to go do their thing up on the bank. Uh, and a lot of the times what happens and what I found is when fish go up on the bank to spawn and there's a big cold front that knocks them off or something, or, you know, they're not quite spawning yet, but they're coming back, um, back and forth from the bank trying to make their beds. A lot of the time they're going to find the nearest cover um, as close to the bank as they can get, whether it's a stump, um, just like flooded brush, whether it's a little rock pile. Uh, this little bait right here, this little 1.0 square bill has won a ton of money in major tournaments for anglers fishing this type of way where those fish are just off the bank holding on uh, just some kind of structure. That 1.0 square bill is great for throwing around these types of cover. Now there's two main bites that I will typically get um, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and that's going to be number one, the reaction bite where you burn something by those fish and um, they just instinctually have to eat it. And two is the hunger bite. And these lures here are gonna really hone in on those two specific bites to get the most out of, um, you know, out of, out of your fishing day. So number one, that 1.0 square bill is great for getting a reaction bite. It's a nice small profile. Uh, typically, I'm gonna go with something like this color here. This is the green pumpkin craw. It's got a little chartreuse. It's got a brown back and orange belly imitates a brim very well, but it also imitates a crawfish. It really just imitates something um, trying to run, scuttle along the bank, trying to get away from a fish. And, um, you know, out of instinct, that fish typically will eat it. Now that nice small profile does play a big role in uh, how effective it is. Uh, you can throw a 1.5 a lot of the times and not get as many bites. Typically, if it's very tough fishing, post front conditions, cold front conditions, I'm gonna be throwing a 1.0 or maybe something like a 4.0. Go on either side of the spectrum, it, it can go either way, but typically I'm gonna be going with the smaller option. I'm gonna be throwing that on anywhere from a seven foot to a seven foot four rod, cranking rod. Um, the, the shorter rods are a little easier to throw it. You won't get as much whiplash from the rod tip. Typically, I'm gonna have around 10 pound line, a uh, 10 pound of Braze X is my go-to for cranking small crankbaits like this. Sometimes I'll throw it on a spinning rod if I really wanna make long casts down, if I've got like a long bank section that I wanna cover really fast, I'll just throw it on a spinning rod. Doesn't hurt, I believe, totally believe in throwing um, 10 pound braided line to like a 10 pound uh, leader on that spinning setup, maybe even an eight pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. So that's number one, that Strike King 1.0. And you can uh, apply the same thinking to Six Sense or any other company that has something like that. And I do think the rattles are key in this bait. So something like a Rapala might not work as well, um, but I do like the rattles and the Strike King baits here. They come with pretty good hooks. I might switch them out to something like an owner 
hook just because I like the owner hooks a little better. And typically the gap between the hook shank and the hook point is a little bit bigger on the owners as well. So when they are in a negative feeding mood and they really just try to go after, after it um, out of instinct, that little bit bigger distance from the hook point to the hook shank from the bait itself uh, is gonna be a little bit bigger. So you have just a little bit better chance of hooking that fish. Plus uh, the owner hooks have smaller diameter gauges on them. So it's easier to get that hook to penetrate through that fish's mouth, which can be tough uh, a lot of the time in the springtime. All right, so next step, that was a lot on that striking there. Uh, next up is going to be a spinner bait, but not just any spinner bait. It's going to be one with Colorado blades on it. Uh, Colorado blades, as opposed to willow blades, uh, Colorado blades put off a lot more thump, a lot more vibration in the water. You can reel them at a lot slower speeds. Uh, so this one right here, this is a Berkeley compact spinner bait. These are pretty new, uh, came out this year. They've got um, power bait mixed into the skirt, as well as a very compact profile. So this bait, when it goes through the water, you know, you can see how small it is right now. A lot of spinner baits on the market today They've got big puffy skirts, make that bait look a lot bigger than it actually is. This one kind of goes the other way and that's why I like it a lot. Um, the skirt uh, narrows down quite a bit. You can, you can put a trailer on it, you don't have to. Straight out of the package, ready to fish. Um, sometimes I'll put like a little Kitek swim bait on it or even a Power Swimmer by Berkeley. But the main thing is the Colorado blades. The Colorado blades allow me to uh, focus on that same structure that I'm targeting with that 1.0. I just can slow down a lot more. This is a half ounce size, uh, but with those Colorado blades, I'm really just kind of slow rolling that rod tip up, waiting for them to just thump it, you know? This is great around uh, grass and trees. Uh, fishing rock, I'm gonna be going with the square bowl more often than not, but this one here, if you're on, on any like really hard cover, like a stump or something like that, uh, maybe a pipe or, or maybe a dock even, they'll get up under docks really well in the springtime, especially if they're not fully committed to going to the bank. That spinnerbait can be an absolutely amazing option for you if you've got more of that type of cover in your lake. Now, let me, do, let me mention water temps and stuff. Water temps, you know, this can range depending on where you are in the country, but specifically here in Texas, right now the water temps are around 60 degrees. When these fronts start coming in, it's generally gonna be around 55 to around 64 up to spawn time. That's about the time that I'm gonna start picking these baits up specifically and you know, trying to work them in these different situations. Now, since I talked about docks already, we don't have too many docks here in uh, the Metroplex and DFW, uh, but there are some marinas and stuff that do house a lot of fish. One of, the, one of my favorite ways to catch them is with a finesse jig. Now this one here is the Picasso Lures, um, little spotty tungsten jig. This is a little quarter ounce jig, and I'm gonna be matching it up with a three inch chigger craw. Um, the skirt doesn't really matter too much. I like to match it to my water clarity and what works best in the springtime for me with my water clarity is gonna be this color here. This is bluegill. It's a very light, um, almost brown green pumpkin with a little bit of blue and orange in it. Uh, so a great bluegill imitation. And the chigger craw here is gonna be acting as kind of like a chunk trailer. The chigger craw does have some very good um, motion on its claws. However, I'm gonna be using the bigger claws for more of a gliding action on this jig. And what happens is when you match these up, um, the jig has a amazing action when it falls and when it's on the bottom, those claws do flap around and create a very subtle action. Nothing crazy. I thought about, you know, the baby rage craw is a great option uh, when it's a little bit warmer and you want a more aggressive, more, more action on your bait. But the chigger craw here is great for just getting bites when it's tough. Uh, the trigger craw, I'll bring this out, I'll flip it, I'll pitch it, just Texas rig style. But um, when you're going after the specific fish on a cold front, this jig right here can absolutely make or break your day. Um, the tungsten allows it to sink a little bit faster, it's more compact, it's, it's more dense than lead. Uh, it creates a little bit of sound on the bottom as well with that tungsten. I'm gonna be using probably 12 to 15 pound line with this uh, set up here. Sometimes, since it's quarter ounce, you know, it's not a huge jump to go into spinning tackle. And Tim and I both love throwing spinning setups for different things. Um, if I do throw this on a bait caster, it's probably going to be around a seven foot three to seven foot five rod, medium heavy, um, with that 12 to 15 pound line. Spinning setup, it's probably going to be my seven foot 
two uh, as well, seven foot two rod. Uh, it's a medium heavy. It's got a good parabolic action to make sure I can drive the hook in. Um, and the hook on this bait here is very, very strong as well. So you don't have to worry about bending it out. A lot of the time I will bite off a little bit of section on that chigger craw there just to make it a little more compact. But that little finesse jig here matched up with that chigger craw gives it an amazing spiraling action as it goes down to the bottom, as well as when you drag it, you've just got to have a nice slack line, just kind of pull it in, wait for that bite, be patient, it will happen, guys. All right, last one up here is going to be a micro Carolina rig. Um, I say micro, a lot of the times my Carolina rigs range from anywhere from uh, half ounce to half ounce and up basically. So this one here, I'm gonna call a micro Carolina rig just because it's smaller than the ones I normally throw. I'm gonna be throwing a Zoom baby brush hog in green pumpkin. Um, if you've got very dirty water, you can do black and blue or blue fleck or something, but green pumpkin for most water applications is going to get the job done. This one here, I might dip, dip the tips chartreuse or purple or blue or something like that just to give it a little more pop in the water. But the real, um, real reason I like the Carolina rig is with the brass and glass right here uh, by Top Brass. Um, what's great about the brass and the glass, you know, it's an old school technique. A lot of people aren't throwing it anymore. Um, in this pack right here, you've got 10 different pieces. You've got five sets of 1 8 ounce uh, brass and glass beads in this. So this is super awesome. You can still Texas rig this. I prefer Carolina rigging just because I can pull it a little bit easier. I'm going to have a swivel. Swivel of your choice doesn't matter too much. I'm going to have around a two foot leader uh, from the brass to the bait here. Um, and that's going to allow me to really just drag it very simply through wherever I need to drag it through. I'm going to have probably a two watt hook on this. Uh, just a typical um, Texas rig hook. Nothing special. You can throw an EWG on it if you want. I find that it gets through cover and rock a lot easier with the Texas rig hook and it looks a lot more natural. You don't have a big hook sticking out of your bait. And typically the lighter style hooks uh, work a lot better. So like the Gamagatsu, just regular, it's not the super lines. Um, that's what I really love in this setup here. I'm gonna have anywhere from a 17 to a 15 pound main line and then I'm gonna have a 10 to 12 pound leader going to my bait here. So. That's gonna be my top four baits for fishing post front slash cold front conditions where fishing can be very tough. I gave you two moving baits there, two kind of drag around uh, finesse baits. But guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video here. I gave you my top two moving baits and my top two dragon baits for post front cold front conditions in the springtime now. And these will work all times of the year. Maybe not that 1.0 in like the dead of winter, but definitely during the summer, fall and spring months. Uh, but guys, if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel. Only about 10% of our viewers are subscribed. So it would make my day if you subscribed here. Uh, we're putting out some awesome content, I think, uh, telling y'all a bunch of my secrets personally, and then Tim as well. We're gonna get him on here in a little bit to expose some of his secret stuff as well. But guys, if you are enjoying the content, please subscribe, follow our social media, Instagram and Facebook at Lake Pro Tackle. You can order all this stuff that you saw here today at lakeprotackle.com. Thank you for watching guys. We'll see you next time.